Good morning. Happy Sunday. I wish we could all be together, but it will, it will come. We are forgiven because he was forsaken. We are alive and well, and his spirit is within us because he died and rose again. Here's my 
Hi, and welcome to New Hope Community Church. Uh, I'm Brian Holder. I'm the pastor, and really glad that you could join us this morning. And uh, we're going to uh, continue in our, our series that is called About the Father's Business. But before we get to that, just a little bit about New Hope. Um, 
we want to just acknowledge the fact that faith is this uh, is a journey and the fact that each one of us is on this path this journey and and we're all at different stages and so we want to acknowledge that and embrace that and and really celebrate that the idea that uh it's not a cookie cutter thing and so uh, we we really like the fact uh that as God calls people into the journey, that there are those who are further along, those who are just beginning their journey, and uh, we want it to be a safe place uh, for everyone, regardless of where you are on that journey. So uh, as we start, let's uh, talk a little bit about what we did last week. Last week, we talked about this verse in John chapter uh, 16 that says, But I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. And this is Jesus speaking after his uh, death, burial, and resurrection actually talking about what will happen after the death, burial, and resurrection. He is saying that uh, it will be the advantage that, because uh, the Holy Spirit will come, uh, the counselor, the helper, the parakletos. And so um, we talked a little bit about what does that mean? It's, it's to our advantage. And uh, again, we're going to continue in this as we talk about uh, about the Father's business. And so after Jesus resurrected, and ascended into heaven, there's a period of time that we find ourselves in now between his first coming and his second coming, where we will live out what it is that he's taught, where we will live by the uh, uh, presence of the Holy Spirit, by the urging of the Holy Spirit, and and we will uh, then bring uh, glory to him and go about setting up the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So uh, we're going to uh, pick up where we left off. So we were talking about the Holy Spirit, and we were pointing out the fact that every person, all believers, every person who believes in Jesus and follows the, uh, the scriptures, they have the Holy Spirit within them now. Jesus said, when I go, I will send to you. He didn't say some of you. He said, I will send to all of you, or anyone who believes in Jesus and his work on the cross, he said, I will send to you the Holy Spirit. In fact, Romans chapter 8 uh, gives us a great verse that says, But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to him. So uh, every Christian uh, has the Holy Spirit. So if you're a true believer, again, that's something that we can embrace. That's part of the journey that we're talking about is the fact that we want to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit that's within us. We want to acknowledge that. We want to become ever more sensitive to what it is that he's saying in our lives. And, you know, there's a, a real peace in that. There's a real um, uh, joy in that, that, knowing that we can rest in the fact that the Spirit has been given to us, and it's not because we've earned it or uh, we have done any works to achieve the Holy Spirit. In fact, John 14 uh, says, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. So this is in the context, again, of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is giving uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, it's, again, not something that we have to earn. So there is that, is, that is good, that is nice, that is comforting, there is peace in that. But I also want to recognize that there are some who will be fooled. Jesus does say in Matthew chapter 7, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's a pretty... Um, daunting statement. Uh, in fact, Jesus uh, tells a parable in Matthew 25 that has a similar idea. It's uh, the idea of preparing for the wedding and the young maidens who go out and wait for the bride, uh, the bridegroom. Some go with oil in their lamps and some go without oil. And oil in scripture is always um, imagery of the Holy Spirit. So it's making much the similar statement, the same statement. So we're going to ask in today's message, what is it that Scripture has to say about the Holy Spirit? What is connected with the Holy Spirit, and how is it that we can have maybe a better understanding? 
And so we're going to jump right into Acts chapter 2, a, a well-known verse. And it says this, Peter said to them, Repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So in this one verse, we see these three ideas coming to together. We're seeing this issue of repentance. We're seeing an issue of a baptism, which is water, a submersion in water. And then we're seeing the presence of the Holy Spirit. So let's first of all jump into uh, baptism. Baptism uh, is this starting gate of repentance. Now, uh, in the uh, time of Jesus, it wasn't called baptism, it was called a mikvah, and a mikvah was something that, uh, submersing in water, this was an, a daily act of repentance, and so this was something that was done on a very regular basis, it wasn't a once and done, uh, much like we practice baptism today, it was every day, there was a submersion in water, and a recognition that I have learned something more than I did yesterday, and I'm going to do better today. So when I know better, I'm going to do better. This is basically the summation of what repentance is. There is a this act, again, of being submersed in the water, is this visual reflection of what is going in and our, on in our heart. And so uh, John draws this out very clearly. Matthew chapter 3, <clears throat> John says, As for me, John the Baptist, I baptize you with water for repentance. So the water is this, this issue of repentance. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. I'm not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So water is intricately linked with repentance. And then, of course, we see the Holy Spirit here as well. And I want to acknowledge that the water is intricately linked with the Holy Spirit all throughout Scripture. All throughout Scripture. So I want to start in uh, Torah and just pull out a couple of instances and show this. So in the book of Genesis, right at the very beginning of the Bible, we have the introduction of the Holy Spirit. The very first line that, that introduces the Holy Spirit to us, we have in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. So there's this imagery that creation itself, it was in chaos, was a formless and void, and then it repented as the Holy Spirit combined with water. So creation itself repented and submitted itself to God once the Spirit and water combined. Later on in the prophets, we see this as well. It says in Isaiah, For I will pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my Spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. And so here we see that the Spirit is equated to streams of water, and dry ground is equated to a place that was void of the Spirit. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump to the Newer Testament to show that this still carries through to the Newer Testament as well. Uh, and Jesus was telling a story about a man possessed of demons when he says, Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. So unclean spirits dwell in a place where there is no water, waterless places. So water, understanding that water is only associated with God's Holy Spirit, not spirits in general, but only God's Holy Spirit. So we see there's a link now. Throughout all of Scripture, we have this idea of water. We have this idea of repentance. And we have the idea of the Holy Spirit. And these are all engaged together. Now what I want to do is I want to jump to this um, well-known story in Scripture and see if we can use this information to make more sense of this. Because uh, we're going to jump to John chapter 3. If you've got your Bibles open up there, starting at the beginning of John chapter 3. And this is the story of Nicodemus, who is a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling body of the, of the, of the Jewish people uh, from Jerusalem. He's a Pharisee. 
and he comes to, to meet Jesus at night and have a conversation with Jesus. So it goes like this, John 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And then Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, born again. Uh, that has become... Uh, vernacular for uh, uh, Christian talk. It is it is one of those main headings in our our dictionary of Christianese. This is a language that that Christians have embraced, born again. But what does it actually mean? Well, we're going to dig into it a little bit. But before I, I go to the next line, I want to suggest to you that the word again could better be translated as from above. In fact, uh, many English versions of the Bible do exactly that. They translate it, one who was born from above, as opposed to, again, the word in Greek uh, that we translate here has some uh, duality to it. So it could be, again, or from above. Most of the time, it's translated from above. And I suggest to you that if we translate it as from above, then the entire chapter flows much easier. So we have, Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Next verse says, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Um, here we have this discussion now where uh, some idioms and some metaphors are being used. I don't think that Nicodemus was ignorant to the fact that they were using metaphors. I don't think that Nicodemus was, was literally asking about going back into his mother's womb. See, the Jewish concept of rebirth uh, centered around significant changes in life. And one of those significant changes is conversion from a pagan idolatry into worship of the one true God. So Nicodemus is not ignorant, thinking that Jesus was telling him, again, to go back into this birthing process. What he's saying is, hey, I, I'm old. I, I'm a distinguished member of the Sanhedrin. I, I'm a Jew. I've already gone through these significant life changes. What could I possibly change? So Jesus answers to him and he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, here we have the water and the spirit coupled again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so what Jesus is saying is, is there is a call to repentance here. He's saying, when you know better, then do better. And, and Nicodemus is coming to Jesus because he's recognizing in him that God is there. He is the Messiah. And so Jesus is saying, if you know that I'm the Messiah and you know better now, you know more, then do better. Do something different. Embrace the Messiah. Embrace this kingdom of God that Jesus is introducing that may conflict a little bit with the traditional idea of what the kingdom of God was supposed to look like. So now we go on to the very same chapter. A little bit later on, John takes us from the scene, from, from there, the this, this scene with Nicodemus and Jesus talking, to a scene to the Jordan River where they're baptizing for repentance. Again, using the same imagery, John has taken them and coupled them together, put them back to back in this chapter, and this is what it says in verse 22. After these things, uh, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he was spending time with them and baptizing. John also was baptizing in Anon, near Salim, because there was much water there, and people were coming, and they were being baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Therefore, there arose a discussion on the part of John's disciples with a, about a Jew, with a Jew about purification. So they're having this discussion on the banks of the Jordan River about this ritual cleansing, this mikvah, this baptism that represents repentance 
And so they're discussing these things. They're discussing the water, the repentance. And it says, They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, Hey, a man can receive nothing unless it's been given to him from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I'm not the Christ, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been, been made full. He must increase, I must decrease. Then he says this verse, he who comes from above is above all, and he who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth. Here's the, the significance of this. Again, same chapter is the conversation with Nicodemus. From above is the same word that's used when born again or born from above. And so John is drawing this idea out as he's putting these two stories back to back. So now we see this chapter is seamless because of this word that's being used and being explained even further. And then he goes on, he says, He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and heard, of that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has set his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. So John chapter 3 is all about this idea of taking the, the Spirit and water and repentance and weaving them together in this idea of when you know better, do better. As they're standing again on the banks of the Jordan River talking about this ritual cleansing, these are the topics of discussion that are being being talked about. This is what Nicodemus came in and Jesus was trying to explain to him. There is a combination of the spirit and repentance and vision through submersion in water that says that this is the beginning of the kingdom of God. This is about the Father's business that you and I are about now. It is about us learning about Scripture and the Messiah and the kingdom and then going about and setting it up. So this is the summary. The giving of the Holy Spirit is a gift. You, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to do anything to get the Spirit other than accepting and embracing Jesus Christ and what he has done for us through the cross, through the grave. The Holy Spirit coincides with the, our eyes being opened to things from above. So it's going to help us restructure our priorities. It's going to help us see the things of earth are no longer to take precedence in our life. Things like riches, fame, possessions, titles, physical beauty, all of these things are, are no longer what's supposed to be most important in our life. The Holy Spirit now introduces us to things from above and so that we can be born from above. Things like love and justice compassion, truth, forgiveness, inner beauty. And as a result of being introduced to these things from the Holy Spirit, we change. We change the way we live. We change the way that we talk, the way that we love. We change the way that we think. And that change is called repentance. What repentance is. The Holy Spirit teaches us a better way, and we know better, and so we do better. We become born from above. We're born of water and the Spirit. So the question that we close up with today really depends upon where you are on your journey. That journey that we talked about as we opened up today. Because each one of us is on a journey. And if you're in this place on a journey where you're saying, I, I, I don't necessarily consider myself a follower of Yeshua, Jesus. 
I, I don't know enough about him. I don't, I, I haven't embraced the truth. I mean, maybe I don't even fully understand what he's done for me on the cross and through the grave. So the question to you is, do you desire change? Does the shallowness of the world system wear on you? Does it make you sad? Do you feel disconnected? Does it even maybe suck you in more than you want it to? Are you looking for forgiveness of mistakes? Are you looking for freedom from bondage, from change, from things that hold you down? Are you looking for uh, acceptance in a community and not a perfect community? Not, not a community defined by perfection or judgment, but a community that is in moving in the same direction. Because the first step to those changes is to embrace the fact that Yeshua Jesus has turned everything on its end. Everything. To be powerful, you, you be weak. To be important, you have to be humble. To, to be first, you have to be last. last. To, to be alive, you must die. And Jesus showed that the way to life is through the torture of the cross. And, and, and against every fiber of our understanding and our being, the way to life is through the grave. And it's an absolutely impossible journey. There is no life on the other side of the grave unless we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So, if you find yourself in that category, the question is, are you ready to embrace Yeshua Jesus? Or maybe you find yourself on a different part of your journey. Maybe you find yourself and you say, well, I already follow him. Maybe you've seen the beauty and the love shine through the blood and the pain of his death. Maybe you have said, I embrace him. If that's the case, then your question is a little different. Do you see a change in your life? Is there repentance in your life? When you learned better, do you strive to, to do better? I mean, and maybe instead of better, we would say, are, are you trying to live a more healthy life, one that is based more upon the truth? Do you respond to what it is that Scripture is revealing to you through the Holy Spirit? You know, some who claim Jesus never feel compelled to treat others with respect. Never feel like they need to show compassion or they need to seek justice for others. Some who claim Jesus just refuse to walk with humility. They still strive for the world standards of health and wealth and strength and power and title. They strive to be first and best and strongest. And they strive for life as the world defines life. They still drink the same way that they did before. They still carouse the same way that they did before. They still judge people the same way they did before. They still gossip the same way that they did before. The only difference for some is that now they go to church on Sunday. And if you feel like maybe, just maybe you're in that category, then I just suggest be careful. Jesus gives that warning. Remember, he said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. And his words to some will be, I never knew you. So if you find yourself potentially maybe in that category, then your question is today is, do I even have the Holy Spirit? And if you do, are you listening? Are you listening to his promptings within you? 
I'm not suggesting in the least bit that if you have the Holy Spirit, you're perfect. No, that is not the standard that we are shooting for. Uh, we are shooting for holy, and the idea behind that is that where we are right now on the journey, we are doing the best that we can to be close to God, to love others. And that's a big difference. Again, emphasizing the fact that it's a journey. It's a process. Life with the Spirit is this never-ending, joyful journey of learning better and doing better. Let's pray. Our dear Father, Lord, I thank you so much just for the fact that you have gifted us with such immeasurable uh, assistance and joy and hope in the third person of the Trinity. You have given of yourself to live within us, to guide us. Lord, you don't control us. Uh, you inform us and you nudge us. But it's up to us to respond. It's up to us to listen. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you have given of the Spirit freely and that we have not had to earn uh, your presence within us. And I pray that uh, for those of us who, who call upon Jesus, that uh, we might uh, maybe try to tune in a little bit better, listen a little closer, respond a little quicker to what the Holy Spirit is urging us to do. And for those of, uh, who are, are still uh, asking questions, Lord, I pray that you would uh, put a person in their life that can help guide them, answer questions, uh, and not be judgmental, but just be understanding and walk with them through this portion of their journey. So, Lord, um, I thank you. I want to also end in a prayer that, uh, Lord, this crisis that we currently stand in the midst of, this COVID crisis, that you might bring healing to the world, uh, that this conversation that we're having today about being born through the water and through the Spirit might be something that washes over the world and that we might know better and do better by seeing your Son for who he is and that we might embrace you through him. So, Lord, bring healing. Um, Lord, I, for those who are, are enduring this alone, dealing with loneliness, um, Lord, wrap your arms around them, give them comfort, uh, give, uh, let your Holy Spirit urge those who are believers to reach out to those who might be in need, uh, who might be lonely. Lord, help us to set up your kingdom here and now, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, we were in John chapter 3 today. If you want to read about this uh, and this interaction between Nicodemus and Jesus, it is portrayed beautifully in a series uh, called The Chosen. There's a few pl different places you can find that. I'm pretty sure it's free on YouTube. If you just typed in Nicodemus and Jesus, The Chosen, uh, it's really a beautiful portrayal of that uh, discussion and interaction. Uh, I want to share with you some announcements before... Before we close up and then we're going to have one more song today uh, to worship i would encourage you to stick around and and worship with us through this song uh, kelsey will be sharing with us uh, if you need prayer let us know prayer at visit newhope.org uh, we do still encourage you to be offering i thank you so much for those who have been faithful and and offering for, for giving their offering through either checks or online giving we have a link to do online giving at newhopecincinnati.com and uh, again, if, if you're still a check writer, you can send it to the church. We, we appreciate that. And uh, we, again, we want to emphasize the fact that that is offering back to God. That is worship. When you do that, you're worshiping God. Uh, we are continuing to try to bridge those gaps in this time. And we're using several different uh, avenues to do that. Uh, we have our website, which is newhopecincinnati.com. We have a Facebook page where there's a lot of conversation going on, announcements being made. YouTube, you can watch past uh, messages, and then we have some Zoom meetings where we can sit and, and see one another and converse and talk about uh, scripture, message, life. Uh, look on our, our Facebook, our, our uh, website, and it'll give you the, the links to those Zoom meetings. Anything else that I haven't talked about, discovered, touched up, uh, uh, discussed, touched upon anything, then uh, I, I welcome you to give me uh Call or shoot an email to me, brianh at visitnewhope.org.
Um, again, please stick around. Kelsey is going to share a, a beautiful song with us. And uh, I encourage you to open up your Bibles, read about this God who loves us so much. And you all have a great week. Voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just a someone? Every failure, you have every victory.